What's up, Mr. Don Long? <laughs> hey, how's it going? I, hey, first of all, let me let me say thank you for uh, making this short adjustment because uh, I I had originally Don planned for today, and then uh, I forgot that I had someone else already planned for that day. So I told Don, I said, Don, can we move it up? Because I forgot to totally. He said, no problem. And now that okay. person texted me 30 minutes ago, 30 minutes before we start. I said, oh, I, I, something came up. I can't, I can't, I can't. Uh, <laughs> that's what kind, what kind of, yeah, what kind of shit is this? And I said, let me call Don. I said, I know. I felt <laughs> stupid as fuck, to be honest. But nah, I said, I'm here, but I'm man. glad you made the time, man. How you been, brother? Good, good. Normally, Tuesday's a good day for me anyway. So, yeah, I've been doing good, man. Busy, you know, working. Yeah. Are you still doing, are you still doing this, this food prep? Yeah, the meal prep. That's what, kind of where I'm at now, one of our, at our location. Oh, okay. You know, so, yeah, we do meal prep, you know. So, this is our building right here, you know. Long oh, okay. life meal prep. Yeah. Oh, so, so. I, so, so you're doing that. you do doing meal prep on a, on, in a big way. Yeah, we do it in a big way. We ship nationwide. You know, we have about 40 to 45 different drop-off locations at different gyms and coffee shops and things like that. Oh, and uh, okay. yeah, so we ship boxes to every city in the country. So how many people, how, 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 many, how many employers do you have? How much staff? We have probably about probably 17 employees. Oh, wow. And, and, mm -hmm. this, and this all started with making food at home? It, yeah, well, you know, it started with, you know, me, of course, me and Sarah were coaches. We coached a lot of athletes. But Sarah was also a good cook. You know, she, of course, she prepped my food. Mm -hmm. But then some of the athletes that we had locally would need someone, you know, hey, because they, they would see my food. Can Sarah make my food for this show or whatever? And, of course, she would prep the food for that athlete or just two athletes. And then she thought we started because we were too busy to actually take on meal prep because we had a lot of coaching going on. But she would take on maybe five or six athletes, and then she would prep all of their food. And, and it was actually some good income in that also, just some extra you know, mm. pocket change. And, of course, um, we actually worked for a meal prep con company before. Also, as we were coaching, we were there. You know, the kind of like the um, consultants okay. for for a meal prep company for their app, for their customers to show them how to do a diet plan and things like that. So we kind of knew a little bit about the business, and so and then we said, okay, let's let's kind of try to venture into actually starting our own, and that's basically what we did. We started uh, prepping from the kitchen. She started prepping from the kitchen. I'm more of the outreach and going get the people and getting gym set up and things like that. Mm -hmm. She's the mastermind behind the cook, and then my brother in law moved from uh, Missouri, which he's a good cook. And then um, then it took on a family business, of course. And then we were able to grow and bring on other chefs and other, you know, employees and things like that, wow. you know, so. So how, over, many, over how, many, how many days a week do you guys cook? We cook only five days a week. The, the, the business runs six days a week. And, of course, we're on our phone seven days a week. But, yeah, so, the, you know, people can come pick up their meals, for example, at this location um, six days a week. But we have two different buildings. One building is up front in the parking lot, in the same parking lot that I'm in now. That's strictly like a, a cook place is where all the cooking is done. This place is a customer service area. And in the back, we have uh, a warehouse. You know, I'll take you back here real quick. So this is where all the shipping. All, if you, can you see back here a little bit? Yes. So, yeah. so this is where we do all the, you know, shipping. It's all the boxes. They're getting boxes ready. And we have walking coolers back here, you know. Got my dogs back here. My wife is over here. That's yeah. Sarah right there. Hi. And hey, so this is where all the logistics kind of take place back here. And the customers order online, they can come pick up their meals here, right from this area right here. Okay. You know. But at the same time, we have, like I said, uh, different drop-off locations, so they don't have to pick up here. They can pick up anywhere in this area, or they can have it shipped directly to the door. Wow. Okay. When, yeah. when, Don, what, what year did you retire? Well, you know, of course, I got sick in, uh, in 99. And then I was able to make a, a comeback. And so I officially retired in 2009. 2009. Yeah, but I was gone. Away. I, was, I was gone for about seven, eight years before I came back. Yeah. You know, I, I can jump in here because I was uh, <laughs> at, at the Don Long's pro debut, right? Uh, 36 now of the champions because uh, if you guys remember and, and then it's you and Chris followed this uh, like so much and you mentioned like back in the 90s we knew every winner in uh, every nationals in uh, every USA right and then it watered down that now we don't really remember but uh, there's too many 95 95 nationals that uh, Don Long won 
if you remember, the lineup was crazy. Okay, yeah. Tom Prince, Tom Prince, who's supposed yeah. to be, there. and then there was Edgar Fletcher that we mentioned so many times, right? Yeah. Like Tony Freeman, Tony all Freeman. The guys. And uh, here comes uh, uh, a newcomer, right? So and Don the, Long came out of nowhere in 95? 95? Well, uh, not, I have been there two years, though. I, I was in 93 and 94. I was, in, I was fourth in, in 93 and third in 94 with, with uh, Paul DeMay on Craig Titus. So every year I had a rough ride. We had, you know, first year was Mike, Mike Francois, Dennis Newman, Edgar Fletcher, but think you about know, it. Myself. But think about it. You listen, listen to the names. We're talking about exactly. a national, a national championship. Yeah. That's yeah. fucking crazy. When you go to the USA's now, I don't know two names. Yeah, yeah, for yeah. sure. Because yeah. I don't remember. Don beat me at the, at his pro debut. I was uh, fourth. He was third behind yeah. uh, Flex and and uh, and uh, Ronnie. Don, yeah. Don, do you remember when I first met you? I remember. I remember. Do you remember? Yeah. I remember exactly. And I'll tell you what happened. Listen, listen to these yeah. guys. I remember. I, when I switched from NABA to the uh, NPC, which was back and uh, competed in NABA last year in 96. I did the NABA universe. And then I came to the U.S. And of course, I wanted to be, you know, my dream was to make it to the Olympia, even though I wasn't sure if I ever going to make it. But I know I had to change, the, you know, I had to do either the NPC in the U.S. or have to do the World Championship. Back then, you remember the World Championship still qualified you as a pro? If you win, yeah. I figured, you know, I'm American, you know, I'm going to just go to the U.S. Anyway, so I did the, uh, my first show was the Border States Classic. I did that show to qualify for the Nationals in Dallas. And I remember yeah. I flew to Dallas by myself. Every, listen, the, the, the show that I did was two weeks before the Nationals. That show was actually for the following year qualification. But somehow they said, listen, we're going to let you in. You're here from the Thailand. We're going to let you compete in this year's uh, um, Dallas. So it was like a week out, bef bef a week before the show, I found out I can compete. So the host hotel was, of course, gone. So I had to find a hotel. I've never been to Dallas in my life. Anyway, so I make it to, uh, I think Troy was in that show too, you know. And I think that I, I, I met Don when he was with Troy. And I remember Don... Don even gave me a ride to the fucking supermarket. And yeah. I was like, this is a yeah. pro. It's fucking, I can't believe he's even talking to me. I swear <laughs> to God. I couldn't believe he was even talking to me. And he's like, you know, because, and then that, the thing was at the border states, I was 226. And at the nationals, I weighed in 215. Mm. So I was super, super flat. You remember that, Don? Don? I was yeah, I super flat. I remember. I remember, um, well, I think I have remember seeing you on stage at the prejudging, and then it was after that you were standing in front of the hotel. I had another guy in there, this guy named Tommy Horn also. Yeah, that was a, you, yeah, you had somebody in the show. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, and so I was driving him. I said, hey, yo, because I saw you standing by yourself at the in front of the hotel. I said, hey, man, you need a ride somewhere, you know? And then uh, and then yeah. that's, that's when we met, and we took it to the grocery store, yeah. So, I, yeah. I, I went back, and I, and I told my wife later, I said, I can, a pro fucking gave me a ride to the supermarket. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's how hey, it, was, it, was a, it was a big deal like that. It was like, uh, it was almost like rock stars back then. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, because you would know anybody who turns pro, it doesn't matter if it's the USA or the Nationals, the world would know who the guy was. Yeah, exactly. And of course, I didn't see it that way as I was asking you. You know, it was just I knew you were. By, I can tell you were by yourself. Uh -huh. And I think I already knew the story. Story that you weren't from. I mean, granted, you were from here, but you weren't wasn't from here. Right, right. And so I knew you were kind of alone. You know, wow. and then uh, so that's why I knew I, I when I asked you, did you need a ride? Yeah, you know, I, so, I appreciate yeah. that till this day for for real. For yeah, real. yeah, yeah. So 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 in so you. When did you have when did you have the issues with the kidneys? What year was that? It started, you know. I think it, of course it probably started before ninety nine. It was ninety nine when I actually realized it, you know. Because okay. what happens ninety six, of course, was a great year for me. I mean, I came out at ninety five. Of course, I was great at the nationals, and the goal was, you know, to go to that night of champions. And um, and I had a very good vision of where I sat at in the sport. And of course, you know, most of the time when you turn pro. At, you know, at the Nationals, you were pretty much ready for the pros at that point. Right. You know, you had to be. And so I knew I would fit in, and I knew, and I even had Peter McGuff in my room that, that day before the show, 
I said, I can guarantee I'm going to be on the first call. Because back then, they only call out like three people at a time. Right. And and I'm able, able to analyze, you know, who was out there. And it was a lot of people. You had Akam Albrick, you had Milos, you had Matarazzo, you, of course, you had Flex, you had Ronnie. Then Ronnie, I'll be honest, I didn't, you know, at first, you know, I thought there's no way Ronnie was going to beat me because in December, in October, Ronnie was about 235 pounds at the Olympia, you know, of 95. You know, so he was he wasn't even a factor. It was, just, but then all of a sudden you heard, okay, Ronnie beat Flex at one of those shows, Chicago. I mean, at uh, at Florida or or Canada. Yeah, Canada. 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 Elite time. Was that 96 or 97? 96 is when he beat, when he beat Flex. But 90, 95, he, what place did he place in 95 Olympia? Like, I don't know, low. He was yeah, 235 yeah. pounds. And yeah. so 235 wasn't going to beat my 250, 252, I'll be honest. You know, that's what in my mind, because mm-hmm. I, I, I knew his body, and that body, that 235 body wouldn't be able to beat me. But all of a sudden, it's a different body. Right huh? His legs were smaller back then, but this, this generation wouldn't know that. Yeah. But by the time he came in 96, though, see, now he's 254 pounds. He went from 235 in October to May, he's 254 pounds. So it's a different run. That's all right. Because you didn't get to see, like, videos. And all I know, he beat Flex. I'm the word he beat Flex. You know, so. <laughs> you heard that. So, <laughs> so, so then I knew I had to worry about him also. So that's why I told Pete I would be in the top three. But, yeah, so, um, yeah, so. Then you know, um, what was the, what was the question leading up? So to that when, when do, so did, when did the issue start? So you had no indication yeah. of any issues until ninety nine. Yeah, at that point, no indications, and then but around the next time I tried to compete, it was a, it was a two factor because I think in ninety ninety seven they started diuretic testing, you know. So I, I didn't know. Okay, either way, I couldn't get dry, you know. But I didn't know if it was a combination of the fact that it was diuretic testing. I didn't know what to do or. Or what have you, but nothing was really working. Mm-hmm. And of course, in 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 '98, they they wasn't diuretic and, and still wasn't working. You know, I was still good, but not like I could be. You right, know, right. and so I never did get to see myself as good as I could be. I got big in off season. I looked great in off season, um, and and then preps always went great, but just never could bring it tight like I needed to be to be a factor at that point. You know, and so that's when. And then and by '99. You know, is when I kind of noticed all of a sudden I had I had a cold for like two weeks and I didn't know why because I really didn't catch colds a lot. I was just very I never got sick a lot, you know. And then finally I went to the doctor and they said, you know, look, you're going to, you know, you're, you know, your, your creatinine is here. You're going to have to go to the emergency room now, you know. And that's just like boom now. And so I, it I was said, like, well, it was that high. It was, it was super high and I, and I didn't even, even know it, you know. And then, uh, but I just felt sick like a flu like symptoms. You know, and then um, and then I went to the emergency room and then they said, you know, they said, you got to go on dialysis today. And then yeah. I, said, I, don't, I don't even know what dialysis is, right. dialysis is at this point. And then I'm not going on. So I denied it for like two or three days. Finally, they called my sister. I was getting worse and worse, you know, swelling up right. and all kinds of things. And then she convinced me to go on. And that was it at, at that point, you know, so it mm-hmm. kind of came pretty, oh, oh, you know, all of a sudden, so to speak, you know. So you weren't prepared at all. But I, yeah, I, I do have a, yeah. all this question that I, I wanted to ask you. I never really uh, had a chance. 96, you, you place third, you qualify for Mr. Olympia, and then you pass on Olympia. Yeah, because I uh, knew I could do I knew I could do better because, I you know, I just competed in October or, or whatever it was at the Nationals. I come back in May, May, and I knew the best I could do in 96 would be about ninth, you know, that's literally where I probably would end up at eight, ninth or something like that. And that's not what I really wanted, you know, but I knew if I had more time that I can come back and be in a mix, you know, top five, you know, a a single digit placing is you got to take that. Yeah. Yeah. But that one, me, 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 (laughs) keep mine. You know, I work, I work very hard. And and at that point, ninth wasn't what I would be shooting for. You know, I'll be honest, you know, I keep mine. I was huge. I was big. I just needed to refine and bring a better, you know, something better. And knowing the list, I mean, you were in there. A lot of people were in there. I already counted the list, and I knew, give or take, you know, anything can happen. But I knew exactly where I would probably stack up at between the seventh and ninth spot, and that's not kind of what I wanted, you know. And then I figured I'd come back to the Arnolds. And honestly, at this point, I feel like because I feel like I could win the Arnolds at this point, you know. So because once again, gaining size was never an issue. Condition was never an issue. And I knew I can put all the things together and be, you know, 
I could go in and win the Arnolds, you know, or something of that nature. Um, but of course, at that point, you know, things didn't pan out after that, you know, just luck of the draw, God's mm. plan. So, so let me go back to the question earlier because Milos changed the subject here a little bit. From uh, so, so do you found out? So you went on dialysis, but if I remember correctly, didn't you compete being on dialysis at one point? So that was years later. So that was after about six, seven. That was about seven years. And so what happened was, you know, you did the normal dialysis in the center, blah, blah, blah. And that went on and on. I have all kinds of, who knows, ups and downs. But then it came up with a new type of dialysis where I could start doing it at home. And it actually cleans the body a lot better. And I was able to eat more. Because when, you, when, you, when you're on dialysis, you can only eat a certain amount of protein and things like that. You can only drink a certain amount of water. Um, and so, but when I started the new type of dialysis, you can, I could drink more, I can eat more. And my body would start, you know vibrating again and I can uh, grow better. Right. And so I said, okay, let me, let me, you know, and I always, I always have dreams about the what ifs and what ifs so I can come back and then come back, not to necessarily, not, not necessarily win or something like that, but just to finish on my own terms. Right. And then so around 2006, I saw that new treatment in 2005 and 2006, I decided I'm a, I want to make a comeback and finish on my own terms. So 2006, seven and eight, 2000, 2006, 7, 8, and 9, I competed. I, I skipped one of those years, but either way, I stopped in 09 in 2009 in my last show because it was I did pretty good. I felt good. I said, okay, now I can finish on my own terms mm. when I'm done. So yeah, yeah. So you know, go ahead. Are are you still on dialysis today, or, or did you have a no, time? no? So then in 2010, uh, I received a transplant from my wife. Oh okay. Yeah, yeah. Oh okay. So so, so you you've been good ever since. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. Uh, yeah, see, I didn't even know that. I, I just knew that there were some issues. Yeah. I knew that was competing. Yeah. yeah. So go ahead, Milos. Go ahead. Go throw it back to 2000. <laughs> uh, throw uh, it back to 1991. No. I didn't realize, yeah, that uh, I, I cut you off in something. I was going to even ask him about uh, meal prep, but uh, I bite my tongue, you know. I, I'm going to ask you about meal prep later on. But ju just that, 96 you uh, you won 95 crazy nationals 96 you you placed third after Ronnie and, and and Flex and it's like why would he not compete at the Olympia I mean for me that was we all dream about uh Dennis just said he was hoping that one day he's gonna make it to the Olympia right mm -hmm. yeah. Chris and I of course like first Olympia that was like oh my god so so you skip. So you skipped the Olympia because you thought, yeah, yeah. you know, yeah, you, 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 yeah. You, you yeah. Thought See, I wasn't. I wasn't. I wasn't big on. I mean, I was never honestly, and that's why I never want. I never won a lot of shows. I wasn't big on, you know, just a trophy, and 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 or just doing the Olympia. You know, once again, I, I had bigger plans. You know, my vision was I literally. I mean, I literally felt like I could have, you know, won the Olympia or definitely been in the top two or three consistently. And so that was my goal is to make it to bring my best body, not a body that I just competed at the nationals. And now, I, okay, here's May. I can't do, but so much between me, I couldn't do so, but so much between May and, and September. Mm -hmm. And so I needed, I knew I needed more time to bring something better, bigger and better. Mm -hmm. And yeah, then okay. if, I, if I knew if I brought something bigger and better with the same condition that I was able to br bring in, you know, put on six, seven more pounds, eight pounds, then I could be a, a bigger factor, you know, not only including, you know, more refinement, more time to, you know, bring in, you know, the, a little more maturity. I was only 28, 29 at the time. So I needed to, and I knew once again, I knew guys have been out there longer than me and I could, I could do the math on what was there. And I, I, I simply didn't want eighth or ninth, you know, mm. so, I wanted yeah. to race as fast as I could. To uh -huh. see where, I wanted to race as fast as I could to see where I stack up against, yeah. them, you know, and I think once again, the United Champions saw, that's that's the key. It showed me where I stacked up. I think I was very comparable with Flex. I was in the ballpark with them, but still, there's a lot between Flex and and you know it was, it was a lot of people neck and closer neck and neck than I was. So that's why I do the math, and I knew you had you had Dorian, you had Sean, you had whoever else you know that you can go down the list, you know. Um, and I just knew you know because like I said, I might have looked. I, so I knew what I was up against. I knew I had to do more to catch flex and I wasn't going to do it in, in, in five or six months, you know? And then, so that was my thinking. I said, and it just never w was really about going to the Olympia. You know, I really don't have any regrets about it, regrets about it either though. You mm -hmm. know? 
So you know, that's hard for me to hear it. You know, we all dream for Olympia, but '97 you showed up, but at the uh, NOC again, that Chris won and I was second. You competed there, but uh, you didn't leave that impact. I mean, what changed? You know, you you pass an Olympia to do good next year, but then it didn't translate really on stage. And that's why that's when I think things started happening. Yeah. And, that, and not including that show was Diuretic Texas, I believe. Tested, yeah. right? It was tested, yeah. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So that was but, tested uh, and was at tested, the same time. You didn't use it or you used something different? <laughs> I didn't, I didn't, that's the thing. I didn't use anything. Cause, and, and so it, it was an issue with that show. I had a sponsor and I said, hey, you know, I rather I want to take the risk and, and, and do what I normally do. I'd rather win, you know, and then um, and then if I get disqualified, so what? I still won the show, you know. But they say, well, we don't want that on our name, you know, blah, blah, blah. So I went in clean and tried to figure out just the best ways possible. But at the same time, my body simply just wasn't functioning. It never functioned well since 96, you know. So I can blame it on a couple of things, you know. But And so it's just, you know, I was small at that, that year, that, that uh, 97 you know, the diuretic testing, everything just went wrong, you know, so. Yeah, but did they really test, Milos? Yes, they did. As they did, they did test. I mean, uh, I know, uh, I know, you piss in a cup, but and did anybody, no, no. anybody pop? Hey, listen, got the cup. <laughs> listen, I got the, I got the uh, second place behind Chris, and I got the phone call, Wayne D'Amelia. Hey, Milos, I said, yeah, I have a bad news. I said, what, you failed the test? I said, no way, no way. So he goes, oh, well, you are using pyretonid. I say, indeed. It's called <laughs> Tauli's in Italy. I use pyretonid. It's not in the list. So, you know, <laughs> again, just, just to see. Here was a, a 97 list of diuretics. You see? Yeah. I remember yeah. that. <laughs> and yeah, but I had, they, all, I, but, I had but, all these that were not on the list. <laughs> so so maybe maybe they, 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 they tested maybe in 97, but 98, 99... We did. I remember. I did the, the United Champions in '99. I pissed in the cup, but when I left for, after the finals, I went to get dressed. I saw the fucking piss and all is still in the fucking in, in, in the cups. Nobody fucking took them. '98 yeah. Olympia. Well, I, I, somebody I, no, I'm talking about the United Champions. Yeah, yeah. but I, let me tell you the history of this. '97, they tested and you know they 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 call me on it like oh shit. So '98 uh, Olympia after the show. I'm walking away and I went into the room and there are all those samples. I think I told you already, I took three of those samples and sent it to the Balco Labs. Okay. 99 Olympia, I was there with Marcus Rule was cut, trying to cheat. I mean, this guy, 99 Olympia, oh, yeah, remember, yeah. he was in your, not face, in your deck there. Like, <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah, really? I mean, there's no way you could cheat. You know, so so anyway. So they, uh, caught, they caught Marcus Rule trying to cheat. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, but did he pop for di did he pop for diuretics after? Uh, you know what? I, I don't even know if anybody was. Well, Nas NASA before. NASA failed before. Oh, NASA failed. Yeah. Yeah, NASA failed, failed in like '97. I think yeah. Jay Cutler failed one year. Two thousand one. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But that was the last time they tested. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 And then that was the last until, time they tested. Until they yeah, that was the last time they tested. Yeah. Hey, you know why? Because uh, uh, he he tested positive. I thought he was going to sue him, right? Yeah, he was going to sue him. Yeah, imagine who, that. who was who was <laughs> Jay uh, Jay Cutler. Oh, oh yeah, so two thousand one. His second place, and he two thousand one. They they did they take his second place? No, they didn't because he he oh. threatened the lawsuit. You know, <laughs> Jay, Jay is something else, man. But, uh, <laughs> Then the media called me and he said he fell on the five diuretics. So every time when I confront him five, he said, hey, it couldn't be five. I said, uh, hey, <laughs> you for sure use the aldactone, right? So that's spinolactone. Yeah. You for sure use the diazide, that's two. Aldactone. Oh, right? to topped it off with a Bumex. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but, but listen to this. In the last podcast when he says, hey, Jay, I remember one time you told me you didn't drink for three days. I said, yeah. Uh, 2001. I said, and then it hit me. So you didn't drink for two for three days for 2001, and then you use the five diuretics. Like what the hell, man? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He, he lucky he's still with us. I did not want to do that. Yeah. No. But you know what? That that was the that was a European thing too because I remember the first time I competed in '93 
where I, I, I had no idea what I was doing. I asked people, what do we do? I said, also, three days before you stopped drinking. Yeah. Now imagine, you know, you got to, <laughs> you're not drinking. You know, if you stop drinking today, and then you're still okay. But the next day or the yeah. day and a half later, your mouth is so dry. Now I have to carb load. <laughs> now yeah. you can't well, use no water. You can't drink. How do you carb load? Fucking eat oats dry. Yeah. What I found that worked later on, though, I, at like maybe 97 or 98 or something like that was, was water loading. You know, drinking about four gallons of water leading into the show. Yes. And that would create the diuretic effect right. and that worked pretty good actually you yeah know? yeah but the, this, yeah. this is the european style especially in germany you know you don't and then you eat try to eat oats with a super dry mouth man yeah. it's yeah <laughs> i didn't then even i switched that. then i switched from oats to cornflakes and cornflakes i cut my gums and <laughs> this was like... people always ask how i got here i was willing to work just a little harder than everyone else every damn day if i can have hundreds of hours back you know i'm gonna grab them spending hours prepping chicken rice and vegetables f that i rely on perfect nutrition i rely on trifecta i, I didn't when even I think know back that uh, in germany you eat the dry dry uh, oats yeah i was i was going with the uh, frank hillebrand to you, this, you know uh, how the germans eat oatmeal Compared to the U.S., you just put well, milk and dry. milk, and that's it. And then you eat it. You don't cook it. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. He was my roommate in uh, in uh, China and Hong Kong, and uh, you know he has a uh, oats, and it's like okay, you know, like let's cook oats, and he didn't. You know, he's just putting it in the, <laughs> like, what on the earth. <laughs> we don't cook oats. We put it in yeah. milk, a little bit of sugar, and that's it. Yeah. And then you start eating it like cornflakes. Yeah, uh, I can do that too. Though. Yeah, yeah. Don, I do. Don, I do I that with my, yogurt. I got my order ready. It's uh, real deal ten on okay. the and the uh, long life meal prep dot com. Okay. For it. Yeah. Now your code is your 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 code is. Uh, what is that for? Uh, I know, but if you anybody else yeah. want to get a discount. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 10. Yeah. Okay. Mine, yeah. Cormier twenty two is my code. I know the code. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> So, okay, so is it? So I mean, I, I can't speak much about about meal prep because I, I received trifecta and I can't complain. Yeah, uh, yeah. So you got to try but, hours. You got to try long life. That, that was my question. That was my question for you. Don. What's different? Yeah, what's different? But from from yours to let's say the all other meal prep companies. I think um, what you're going to see, of course, you know, from us, you know, you you know, for, I'm, you know, I'm a professional athlete. I know what people want. We know what people want, and and we, we're not going to, um, some companies, and I'm, I'm not going to name companies or whatever, but some companies, you're going to order a meal. And it may not be you or may not, you know, particularly because you're you, but some companies, companies may, may, may try to get, say, six ounces of protein, but they're going to get four ounces of protein. Mm -hmm. But the average person is not going to notice that. And so companies will do that and you get less, you know. So we, we make sure everything is measured to the T. Some companies say that, but when you put on the scale, it may not be that we have integrity, of course, being athletes that we, we know the athlete needs that four ounces or need that six ounces. Mm -hmm. And then not including that we make sure the food tastes good. People don't don't want to eat bland food. And at the same time, we have a, a line where we don't cross where it's too high in sodium. So we use more uh, homemade special season, spe special sauces and season to where, you know, you're not getting the sodium, but you're still getting the flavor, you know. We, of course, we have a sealed tray, just like you know your trifecta would be, to where the meal stays a lot fresher in that container rather than a, a lid that goes on a container. Uh, so that helps the meal out a lot. And of course, and then we just have a lot, large variety of uh, entrees that we create every week. Every week, our menu changes. We have healthy protein desserts; they change every week. Of course, we have breakfast items. We have cold pressed juices. So you name it, you know. So we always create new things. We have dog food. We have kids food. You know, so. So, so, so people would order like their food for like for a whole week or, or how does it work? Yes. Most people, of course, order for the whole week. And it just depends on how many meals they want to not prepare themselves. Some people want four meals, you know, per day for the whole week. Some people only need two because they can do the rest themselves. And then you have older people. You have different people that just needs one meal, one meal a day, mm -hmm. you know, and a snack. And that's what they want every day throughout the week. So you got different ranges, you know. So, so is our that, customer is base. 
Go ahead, go ahead. I'm sorry, I'm done. Our customer base is large. We, you know, we deal with a lot of older people. We deal, of course, athletes. We deal with uh, everything in between, you know. So, yeah. Is the food frozen when you ship it? It is flash frozen when you ship it, though. Yeah, it's oh, okay. the only way to keep it. You know, you know. Well, not the only way to keep it fresh. We make sure it stays fresh that way. So, yeah. you know. So, and when yeah. you when you ship, is this like overnight, one day shipping, or how does that work? Yes, yeah, some places are one day, two days is the max. Yeah. You know. So the West Coast is literally, even though we're on the East Coast, we get everything to the West Coast in one day. Um, anything in the North Carolina and Virginia area, we get in one day. Anything outside of that is about two days. Never anything more than two days. Though. Okay. And that's guaranteed. Yeah. And Me- not including Me- Me- have you tried them? No, I tried a trifecta. Yeah, I tried trifecta, you know, but, but uh, I didn't even know that Don has it. But Don, that, that was my question. So you, you sell uh, meals already pre-made or you you give a choice any protein any carbs any veggie you know you can do uh, how the like if yeah, I you can do that the- you can do that also what we do is each week we create five new entrees it, for example it can be a tasty bowl like a crustless pizza bowl it can be um a mesquite chicken bowl this is one of the entrees it can be um where we have a turkey burger sweet potato mash but you have a section where you can go and build your bowl. Say, I want six ounces of protein, whatever protein you choose. Mm. You have you want six ounces of carbs, whatever carbs you want, and you want your veggies. You can put that and you build your own bowl based on in that. You, then you tell us, how do you want that seasoning? You just want it plain. You want it seasoned. You want it medium, large, like that, you know. And we custom to however you want it. You put it in the notes. Add more sodium to my food. Add less sodium. Add no sodium. You know, whatever you say you want that meal to be, because, of course, we prep for a lot of people prepping for shows. And then if they if they want that, you know, they're going to want their straight like, you know, nothing on it. We can do it just like that, you know. And of course, if they want a little sodium, we can do that also. You know, you keep measuring six ounces. Is is this like a normal measure for you? Six ounces, uh, six, six is six and four, of course, are the standards. But yeah. you can do more. You can do as much ounces as you like in a buildable. Yeah. Every bodybuilder should have much more than six. Yeah, yeah. And then so bodybuilders, when they order, they're going to order more than six, you know. But when you go standardly picking a bowl, you know, granted, I I eat four ounces of protein a day right now. You know, I mean, a meal, you know. So I don't eat a lot of of protein or a lot of carbs. Me too. I do four ounces. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't eat a ton right now. Do you Um, have a wild game? Say it again? Wild game. You have a bison, uh, ostrich, elk. Wild game. We, we, I'll, I'll put it this way. We can do anything. Those are just going to be custom. And then, so if, so if an athlete comes, hey, I need some wild bison, we're going to get the wild bison meal for them and prepare it in the whole nine yards, you know. So anything that someone wants, we can actually do. But you have our standard things on the, on the website. But we have athletes all the time that need certain, you know, proteins and we make it happen. It's going to cost more, you know. And so you keep in mind, our website is made for, you know, for, you know, to fit in the average person's budget. But if, if people want um, whatever they want, we can do, I would say, you know. So you and they Sarah, want all, all grass fed. We can do all, all grass fed. But you and Sarah are coaches also. Do you, do you ever like, let's say you're going to take uh, Chris Cormier, right, as a, as a client and you're going to exactly tell him structure like six meals and make the meals and just okay, this is your plan without even asking him. When when you have a client, you do the diet, and then you provide them the meals. Do you ever do that? We 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 do that. We don't because we, we don't coach anymore. Hmm. We don't coach anymore. So if someone comes, but we because we still know how to write meal plans. And so once someone comes to hey, I, I'm trying to do this. I'm trying to do that. We say send your pictures, send your body weight, send your goals, and we can design your plan for you. Because once again, we have that capability. Um, hmm. But once again, we don't. We don't full-time coach. What we are going to incorporate, though, is more of a, a background coaching staff that can, you know, can help people with that also. But right now, if someone comes to us because they do, they know we're coaches, then we can uh, we can customize and do their meal plan for them. You know, mm-hmm. they give us their macros. If they say, my coach put me on this, this is my macros, okay, we got you. Here's a, here's your meal plan right here. We can figure, you know, we can do all of that, you know. Uh-huh. And so that's, the, that's the, be- the, the best, the background of having the coaching you know, experience, you know, and, and doing plans consistently. And then, of course, we can implement all that to help people. But a lot of times athletes will come with their plan from their coach, 
you know, and then we, we they just have the macros mm -hmm. is what he wants me to eat or or they have it down to the science. So, you know, that want coconut oil. I want this. I want this. And then we whatever they want. We custom. Like I said, you know, because we've done some of the top athletes in the country so far, you know. So, yeah. so I, I know you're probably pretty busy. If you can't coach or if you don't have the time to coach anymore because with that with the meal prep food, but do you still follow bodybuilding? You still watch the shows? Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh, yeah. Okay. I'm a I'm a I'm a bodybuilder at heart. Trust me. So All this right. is my life. Did you guys? Yeah. Did any anybody uh, uh, follow the uh, Emperor Classic this weekend in Spain? Yeah, yeah I did. Yeah. What do you guys yeah. think? Yeah, go ahead. I thought, it, go ahead. I thought it was it was good. You know. I mean, I'll be, I'm, I'll get, I'll be honest, I'm in the bandwagon of bodybuilding. To me, it's different. You know, it's different than what it used to be. And I, and I, but it is what it is. Right. But, you know, I, I don't get easy impressed anymore. Going back from feel, you know, cut off with feel, maybe Sean, you know, it's, it's I'm, I'm not excited as, as, as I used to be, you right. know. Right. With feel, 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 Dexter. Sean and all those guys, you say, wow, it's something I can say, wow, that's, yeah. that's still great. <laughs> yeah. Nowadays, I'm having a hard time, I'll be honest. It's my opinion, you know. So, What what I, what, what do you think, Milos? I still think, as, as Don said, it's not at the level at the 90s, right? And then every time the newcomers are like, pissed off at us, like, ah, oh, you always uh, t t telling us <laughs> 90s and early 2000s, right? But let's compare it, right? Yeah. So, we, we had a lineup there that probably wouldn't do much if there was a lineup in the 90s. I mean, take any show and compare it. But Michael Creaso came uh, very much improved. Conditioning was, uh, you know, dramatically better than uh, any other show that he competed. And we all know his physique. Uh, so conditioning was spot on. The wow factor with the uh, shoulders, arms, when he lifts him, is all there. But still, there is no width. We tapered, right? uh that, that uh, can cost him in, in many instances so he won uh, fair and square but for olympia he's going to need much more to leave an impact and move into the top 10 especially top six super thin skin great conditioning round muscles right but it's it's good you know with the arms down you know the when he's showing as soon as he lifts up you see there is no width to the torso it can cost him front front uh Front last, front uh, last back, spread. back last spread uh, you know back now biceps is okay you know it, it's happening the detail wise but it's not a bag that can contest top six at olympia right mm. so that's the reality second place was uh andrea presti who i think is dramatically improved you know his legs are finally catching you know, not catching up it's still uh still the gap between upper body and lower body but andrea is so goddamn wide I don't know if you really pay attention. That width is crazy. Shoulder, then lats. So uh, from the side, he could uh, pair, uh, even in sides, big monster Michael Crizo. From the side chest, uh, side triceps was Crizo all, all, all the way. Front down biceps, Crizo because of these crazy arms. But uh, if Andrea would play to his strength, he has a crazy V taper. I mean, one of those, right, it, it just it goes from here to nothing, but then he would hit the pose only for a couple of seconds, right? So not enough to be appreciated. When you're going against narrow guy, you have to explore his weakness. So stay longer when you're, when you're beating him, right? Uh, this is how you, you catch him. Anyway, uh, Andrea was also ripped to pieces, you know, great conditioning. Third was Brazilian guy, uh, Wellington. Beautiful physique, you know, uh, Originally, I thought like, oh, he is not in condition like he was in Brazil. But then it was exact example, a little bit of fullness. Maybe he lost a little bit of dryness, but now making so much fuller upper body, back, chest, it was more powerful. So this was actually a better look. And he plays like a third, you know. Fourth yeah. was, if you can imagine, 21-year-old. I think is Jose Manuel Munoz. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. 21 years old. Mm -hmm. Holy shit, ripped to pieces like a maturity that you just don't put it to the 21 year old, right? What does that mean, though? What does that, does that mean that he started at 13 and, and, and you know, are we going to see you him know, in the next that's 10 years? A good question. You know, God knows, you know, but uh, this doesn't happen overnight. So I would assume he probably, like Arnold started when he was 13, you know. <laughs> this is interesting <laughs> because, you know, 
on her Instagram, they, they put the pictures of Ronnie and then uh, uh, Dorian at the 21, 2, 3, and then they put the Arnold at 18, right? As a comparison, like Arnold was like so much more advanced even at that that age. But you don't go, you're not gonna go into your 30s and 40s and competing. So you're gonna you only have a certain gap of time. Certain gap, but but uh, this kid was super impressive. I mean, uh, I loved it. I, I love to see this kind of newcomer. It's happening. Fifth was Roman Fritz, mm -hmm. and you know him very well, the German, right? Mm -hmm. He proved. This guy is ripped to pieces. He's always ripped, but he always comes in too flat. Yeah. So he he, he got, always looks when he gets he, five, six, seven weeks out. He looks like he's unbeatable, and when you yeah. see him on stage, he looks like an amateur size wise because he flattens out. Even though he carves low, probably three times more than everybody else on that stage. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. so now, and I remember the last time he posted an update, it was a couple of weeks ago, and I said, this is how you should walk on stage. Don't do all that shit. Just keep fucking, wait and just walk on stage. Yeah. And I think he kind of did that. He didn't do any last minute changes or, you know, and he looked better. I looked better because he's really impressive. You Super know? impressive. I, I got him a little bit with Fouad. We did like little posing instructions, right? Uh -huh. It's really interesting. I mean, Chris is master of it, right? to get most out of each body and each pose, each angle. And he doesn't. You know, his legs are freaky good. Mm -hmm. Cut the upper body, look at the legs, probably the among the best legs uh, in bodybuilding right now. From the side, and then the side and glutes, all these uh, times. But then he does some weird shit with the torso, and the arms, you know, puts it this way, right? Yeah, yeah. Doesn't open up. So he could look even better than he did. Chris, uh, need, Chris needs to uh, hit him up. Yeah, I thought, I thought Crizzo's back is still not where it should be. We just switched. Now we just talk about Roman Fritz. Now he goes straight to Crizzo. Yeah, right. I, know, <laughs> but I didn't get a chance to talk about him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I just want to finish with this, uh, uh, you know. But then Chris, you take over and analyze everybody. <laughs> uh, sixth place was uh, Peter Klancir. Okay, everybody's calling him Peter Klancir, and so I mean, sometimes it'd be good to know the name Peter Klancir, Croatian guy. Sensational. I mean, he has he's one of those big, wide, structured, everything, right? Uh, a little bit longer torso, so he should, you know, have those uh Lee Priest kind of uh <laughs> posing chunks to, to elongate your, your legs and stuff like that. Uh not as conditioned as maybe before, so that cost him. Uh, what do you what do you think? No, I said like Lee Priest posing. <laughs> yeah, but but listen, I thought this is Nick, Nick Walker as well. Uh, you know what I did for Nick? I took his picture and I colored a new posing chunks over it and I sent it to him and uh, look at it. I mean, seriously, when you have a short legs and long torso, just try to make these posing chunks a little bit uh, up higher and, and put them up, it changes the picture. Guarantee. You know? But anyway, so so there were a few more guys in, in the show, but uh, uh, Chris, go ahead. What? Tell, what? Tell Chris Go ahead, Chris. What's what's wrong with Chris? Oh, it's back. I just thought it's back. The that's going to be an ongoing situation. I don't know if it's some of the insertions are high or something, but it looks like that's a situation. You know, it looks like a little bit lower in the front to me, a little bit lower, mm. which is better improved. Um, other than that, I mean, he's a clear winner. And uh, what's the guy that took third? His name is. Uh, Wellington. Wellington, yeah. That guy, I like that guy. <laughs> yeah. He's very impressive. And I, I follow him on Instagram. And yeah, man, a big, big fan of his. I think he's going to be somebody to watch in the future for sure. Yeah, I think so too. Let me ask you something else, guys. Did you guys see that classic guy that's uh, out there training in Dubai? That brother? Black that, that black guy? What's his name? Yeah, yeah. Uh, NFT Sebastian or something? Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, holy shit. Yeah, I don't know his name, but it's like... That, so dude, that dude hasn't been on stage yet, and he has a crazy following on Instagram. People love his stuff. Did you see that guy, Don? I saw him. I that saw him, dude, yeah. I, I mean, I don't know if it's just the videos or the pics. That dude looks fucking ridiculous. Yeah, he has, he a, he has a nice... Andrew Jack. Huh? You see him pose with Andrew yes, Jack? Yes, yes, yes. That puts in perspective, man. So what show is this guy getting ready for? Is he doing the Portugal? 
Probably, yeah, probably. The the guy is uh, I've never seen strider chest like this in my life. You, you seen it? Yeah. I mean, it's it's. Uh, He's clean. Is, He's clean. All his. All his muscles are clean. The striations are still there. You can see he's not all shut up with all scar tissue everywhere. Yeah, he's clean. <laughs> yeah. The, Chris, you know what I'm talking about. You see the striations right. in the shoulder. You see you see stuff I that know. you don't see on the guys no more because they're all shut that's, up. That's what I like to see. I like yeah. to see. Yeah. Yeah, the clean muscle, yeah. And yeah, full round. Full that round. Up, that up ain't impressive to me at all. I don't get it. Not at all. Not at all. Yeah. He's yeah, that's why that, that's why that guy looks so unique right now. He's he's different. It's, it's just honestly, it it is us how we used to look. It's just that the muscle that you train, you earn, and it's all shaped pretty, and now it's just waiting to be totally cut up. You know, so he's definitely he should, he should make a fact. I would like to see his legs a little more separated, uh, a little harder as he goes along. But his 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 uh his his body his upper body is shredded of course his chest was like Milo said you know yeah I mean his name what's his name Stefan Stefani Stefani yeah yeah crazy I see I, I see old school bodybuilding when I see this guy you're absolutely right yeah. Don with the striations in his shoulders I mean all the way you know and it's just crazy it's just good to see yeah. there's still people he out there very good poser very good good poser but yes. I tell you this if you watch him I think that the front of our biceps he doesn't show the biceps correctly. Uh, there, there is more to it. He, he, he doesn't pop. You know, I think that he doesn't. Yeah, this is. How old is he? How old is he? This is as good as it gets. Oh my God! I don't know how old he is, but he's not. I don't think he's old. No, he don't look too old. I mean, this guy is still finding his body, finding the poses, and what's yeah. gonna be the best way to to uh, to showcase that physique. Well, genetically, yeah. genetically, he can be hard to beat once he gets it all. Once he gets out there, he, he's genetically he's gifted for sure. Right. right. But you see, well, when we talk about uh, classic physique, major thing is structure. And uh, like Chris Bamstad, when you compare him muscle for muscle, right, with this guy, would uh, lose, right? Mm -hmm. But structure is so dominant. And then once it's only front double biceps, back double biceps, so it's that crazy V taper that uh, Chris is like so goddamn good. And then his side chest is excellent. This guy's uh, side chest is excellent. I think that Chris has a more detail through the hamstring, glutes, tie-ins. Yeah. You know, he, he really, you know. So there is still level that I think that uh, Chris could beat him now. Uh, if this guy gets expanded and get a little bit more wider, so creates that uh, V-tape illusion. Mm -hmm. But you have to see, but, but, but you know how it is always. I mean, you know, you can look great standing by yourself. We have to see him stand next to these guys to really compare him because I just see a picture of him standing next to um, um, Mike Sommerfeld. Uh -huh. I guess they were they were training together, uh, but they posed next to each other. Now look at the size difference, and Mike is not the biggest guy. Oh, okay. You know, Mike, Mike is putting your elbow in front of him. <laughs> yeah, he's he's out. He's he's getting the ankle a little bit, but. Uh, but like I said, it can, the condition that this guy brings, and if he brings that to the stage, I think he's going to do very well. I think he will qualify for the Olympia this year, and I think. Yeah, he, I think and I think I because think of his fan base, he has a huge fan base. Uh, I think because of his fan base, he will going to get. He won't get overlooked. Yeah, I think if he if he if he brings a condition that meaning that he's one of the best condition on stage, which Bumstead is, you know, he he, he has to use that as the marker. I have to be that kind of condition, then he'll give battles. To, you know, he'll, I think he can surpass a lot of people and then kind of battle with a Bumstead. But mm -hmm. Bumstead right now, his condition is top notch. And so he has to use that as your marker. Nothing less than that, that thin skin, side, the side leg cut, you know, that type of thing. Mm -hmm. And then with that type of body he has, if he's in that same condition, to me it's hard to beat, you know. But that's what, what I, I'm waiting to see a little more on the side leg and stuff come out, you know, mm. and he has to have that going on. Every detail has to be there if he's trying to be up in that one, yeah. two, three spot. You now, so. Don, who's your favorite bodybuilder in the today's in today's lineup? The the the, the, the new generation. Who's your favorite bodybuilder? Um, see how you already have to think that long. What does yeah. that tell you? I mean, I get because I'm looking at I'm looking at future. I'm looking at I mean. 
I like Derek. No, no, as of I right, like as of right now, if you would have to choose yeah, today, I, I mean, I like Derek's drive and and his discipline and his dedication and his climbability. Mm. Um, but I like uh, Andrew Jack, and I like uh, I like Samson because if Samson puts it all together, he's unbeatable. I would like to see his back a little bit better. Did you see um, Samson guest post this past this weekend? Yeah, that at was three twenty seven. Yeah, so that was pretty ridiculous. Yeah. Chris. So and and that's the point. If he if he if he if he once again shoots for all time conditioning, yeah. he's he's hard to beat. You know. How long much he weighs? Three twenty seven. Did you see what he looked like? This fool looked like he was six seven weeks out. Conditioning was like really good to you. Yeah, yeah nice six pack. You can tell it's quality. You can tell it's quality muscle. He's not carrying a lot of body fat. You know, yeah. even at this body weight. So Milos, are you shooting for crazy conditioning this time? Yeah, he has to be. I mean, uh, everybody knows he has uh, uh, all the tools, enough size, enough shape, enough thickness, all this stuff. He would need a bigger back, like uh, uh, Don said, a little bit more wider, especially for Derek, who has that crazy. But uh, you already know Derek is going to take those poses. Back to our biceps, you know, we can But, you know, it, so. Here's it, a corner. Me, you as coach, I'm telling you, trust me when I say this. Have him do what I call, you know, you might have heard it, touch up training. And I'm putting it out there, everybody. So every day, something for his back. Every day, pull-ups, rows or something, four to five sets daily. And trust me, he'll bring his back up. Big I, was, I, 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 I tell people the same thing. You know what I tell them? Do fucking, every time you train, before you start training, do five sets of pull-ups. Yeah. And I do it chin, afterwards. Chin-ups. Yeah. Chin-ups. You know, real. Yeah. And so every day, so I just keep, keep in mind, I didn't have a great back when I first started and then Jim Mannion came to me one day and said, you need to bring your back up, you know, and I did something. And so what, what happened was I used a theory before I got in the body, but I used to do dumbbell curls every single day. That's all I used to do. And of course you see, I had big arms and you look at the guy who just did quads every day. He got big quads. He going to have some big quads. He ain't do nothing else. I mean, you have the guy, that's all you want to train is called the guy that just want to train chest bench every day. He may not have legs, but he's going to have a chest. So the, my theory came from that years ago where I created touch-up training. And so I did it for all, a lot of body parts, side delts. I still do. I have little delts now because I do side laterals every single day, every day, four sets. And then so my point is, which I wanted to tell Samson, every day something for the back, four sets, five sets at the most, heavy, 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 heavy. And trust me, the back will start evolving. You, you slowly break down little muscle fibers every single day. They heal quickly. And then it's not overtraining because the, that little pump that you got is going to heal real fast, but the growth is going to take place. And so I did that with my back, shoulders, hamstrings, quads, and everything, and it will work. You know, so he put that in his ear, and he can, he can he can have a much better back come to Olympia time. Trust me. Yeah, you know? I'm telling him, but uh, he'll hear this. Uh, he's he's watching uh, old, old school podcast, so it's good. I mean, I I do this with many things. You know the the. Especially chest, especially side delts and stuff like that. Back, you know, uh, usually when you have a two big back sessions a week, you know, how nowadays it's overtraining, overtraining, overtraining. You know, uh, I don't believe in it, but uh, I didn't know that uh, Dennis, you were starting with uh, pull ups every single uh, workout. That's great. No, not uh, me. This is what to tell other people. I wish I could have turned back the time. I would have done it too. Yeah, yeah, see, but I wouldn't even, I don't, I don't even, I wouldn't, I never even train. I mean, well, I, I'm not saying never. I didn't train back twice. I trained it once hard time per week, but yeah. the touch up training is going to fill in the blanks and, and do all the other work. Trust me. I mean, it's hard for a lot of people to believe, but every athlete that I coach did some type of touch up training and you can interview it in every one of them. They yeah. say how it been. I did. I, I did the same with Natalia. When she came mm -hmm. to me last year, she had no back zero. And I do with her. I did with her, her pull-ups before every workout. Five sets of pull-ups, just so she starts feeling the lats, so she can start. And she, in one year, her back improved tremendously. Well, and I, yeah, so definitely. And we only yeah, train back. We he, only train does, back if, once a week, so we're not. We didn't he, train back twice. Exactly. That's all I train it once a week. And if he does that, I guarantee you, he has nothing to lose. And if he does something for his back every single day, and they can, you can mix it up, two or three days, it can be a pull-up movement or pull-down movement. And then two or three days, some type of heavy, uh, I would do a seated roll or a hammer strength roll, something that's, that you can really feel the thickness. And then uh, and then you you create a great back, you know, so. I used to do something like that with biceps. Hey, Don, bring the camera up. We don't see your eyes. Okay. 
<laughs> Can you see me? Yeah. It's like a, yeah, that is better. Okay. There yeah. you go. I was gonna say I, I used to do that with biceps is a 10 minute workout Monday, Wednesday, and Friday for a month straight. Just that for the arms. So it's 10 sets of bicep curls laid back, 10 sets of tricep extension sit up for 10 minutes straight, three days a week. And that will add at least an inch on your bicep. Yeah, and it's the same kind of theory, you know, it's the same sort of a theory. So and sometimes, you know, I say I don't, I don't, I don't choose to do a lot of sets because I don't want to go to the level of doing too much on it. But that little bit, four to five sets, it seems to be a happy place where you can still stay, you know, where you're not overdoing the body and at the same time getting the growth. You know, I literally had to do it for a lot of different body parts. It's, you know, definitely my back and my quads because it keep my, I didn't have huge quads to start off with, but I did. I squat every single day. You know, every day I, I would squat every day, you know, not heavy, just maybe two plates, two, three, two or three plates every single day. And then my quads grew every day. I did because uh, I did hamstrings separate every day. I would do some type of hamstring curl. And if you go back and look at my, say, junior nationals to the nationals, it brought the hamstring, you know, big time. Yeah, but I would do a single leg hamstring or some type of hamstring movement every single day. And even like I said, and then some nowadays I don't even train back. I just do touch it because I'm, I'm so busy. I don't get to get in on, on a back day. I just do some back touch up every single day. And now my back still stays decent, you know? So, um, How old are you now, Don? How old are you? 56. 56. So yeah. you, you're, the, you're the youngest one on the panel. So how do you, so you, you're about a year or two older, right? <laughs> 57. You, yeah, okay. Yeah. Oh, Chris, no, Chris, Chris, is, Chris is the youngest. Chris, Chris. Chris younger than me, yeah. Uh, 55, yeah, Chris. So, uh, yeah, it, it, so uh, you know Samson is here and uh, Derek today. They're going to be training together. Some fake workout. Yes, I don't know, I don't know what this is. Yes, in Phoenix, yeah. Go see him. No, I, I, got, I, got, I got something to do. I have to be, I have to be somewhere, too. Yeah. I'm, I'm here, brother. I'll check him out. I know. Chris is, Chris is taking him supposedly through a workout. I'm not, I'm not sure what that should be, uh, uh, but... Uh, you know, I you know they want to make it like. Uh, I want to do legs, huh? I want to do legs. Yeah, but get, get them really, make them really fucking train. Don't make it like it's a show. But you know what? I, Chris is funny. Milos, have you realized when Chris works with someone, I always laugh my ass off because <laughs> <laughs> Chris, <laughs> Chris will be there if even if it's a picture, it doesn't matter. Or you can wa watch him video training someone. And even if it doesn't pull the, he doesn't pull the weight, but he's, he goes with him. And you watch Chris's face. It m reminds me like he's doing a Chris, he's doing a Chris Lund photo shoot. Chris would be like, <laughs> I'm feeling not, it. not lifting the damn thing. I'm feeling it though. <laughs> I always laugh my ass off. Look, at Chris, look at Chris's face. It looks like he's lifting the weight. <laughs> I'm, in, I'm involved in every rep. Yeah, yeah. Take him to a workout. Make him fucking puke. You know, get yeah. something because you know if 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 they're if, gonna be there, Chris. Yeah. 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 Are you are you in Phoenix? Yeah. Oh. All right. Uh, yeah, make sure. Okay. And then uh, take them uh, posing and, and stuff like that, right? Yeah. Then, as uh, you were talking about uh, extra work, extra work, it just happened. I I reordered my uh, Mike Manzer, right? Uh, I, I just got him last week. I've been watching a lot uh, again. This uh, the theory and how it's like oh. You know, if you can nail the nail in one hit, don't keep hitting. And then you train with Dorian, right? They, uh, one warm up and one all out. And uh, Mike Manzer, everything, recovery, recovery, recovery. You should do the uh, least amount as possible, right? You know, it, it would, that, that would never work for me, of course. You know, I was, Yeah, uh, it doesn't work for everybody. I mean, everybody's a little different. What works? Well, listen, Mike Manzer didn't create that physique that way. He accepted this later on in his uh, right, career. Right. And you know, okay, if, if five is good, then ten is twice as good. Then might as well go hundred. You know, there there are differences, right? But what, one, what was the what was the whole theory? Because uh, I'm I was talking to someone about, uh, the other day about what was the Chris? Are, are you trained with him? What was it? What was the whole theory? It wasn't like exactly one 
warm-up set and then all out. It was a couple of warm-up sets. You got more intense, okay. more intense, and then you went all out. So what do you mean a couple of warm-up sets? So you mean three sets, and then the last set you go all out? This is the normal training. The third and yeah, fourth set. Yeah, You know, you can't say, oh, no, the first three. The third and fourth set. Then <laughs> yeah, but you can't say the first three sets is warm-up sets. Well, one yeah. is finding your range of motion. The second one is a little bit more intense, maybe 60%. You add some weight. And but you're still, you're still pumping yeah. those muscles yeah. up. Yeah, yeah, but so and it's not a... Mm. Yeah, it's just mastering the, the repetition is what it, it's uh, all about. It's not about how many reps. That's why I don't count any reps. But, you know, I'm just looking for effort and looking for, uh, you know, how much you're going to put into one repetition. But that's effort, okay? We all appreciate it. Okay, go to the failure. But if you don't have enough warm-up and preparation, and then you go all out, there is just like disaster waiting to happen. Tendon, ligament, or it's muscle. Couple, in there's a couple of sets in there of warming up. Yeah, I, I change and it. You warm up, and you do cardio before, the, before you work out. You see, and, and this is another thing, and there's so much research, because I was asked many times. The cardio itself should not be done before the weight training, because it's... More on the molecular AMPK protein that's going to be suppressing mTOR pathway. I don't want to talk as a fucking scientist because I'm not, <laughs> right? But, uh, you know, uh, th this is when they, every time these uh, smart asses, they're bringing me this issue, right? And how about this? And how about that? Okay, I understand that. And I would never really tell you, go do cardio and then immediately go into training, you know, you know, separate the two. But uh, as far as actual workout, come on, guys. If you go all out, and I've seen Dennis lifting a fucking five plates on inclines, like nothing and all this shit. So if uh, Dennis trains with Dorian and goes to the incline barbell, and he can bench, what do you do, five plates for six reps easily, you know, shit? Five plates? Yeah. Eight? Eight, yeah, shit. Okay, so five and a half or six or something, right? So what did you supposed to warm up that one set or a couple of set? One plate? Two plate and then go to five plate. I mean, it's a, it's a suicide mission. You know, I I I don't approve it. You won't be able to do five plates though. Dennis was doing it every time. Not not you wouldn't be able to do that with Dorian. What What do you mean? I wouldn't be able to do it. <laughs> you wouldn't be able to do it because you you're recruiting way more muscle groups to get that five plates up than what he's going to require for that rep. That's that. You think the incline barbell, you, you're working your upper chest in a little bit. You're, I mean, your passion. mind is going to reach for any muscle group possible to make you successful in that rep. So, so what do you mean? Like doing is, is, is it's turning all the other muscles off? I'm not, I'm, I don't understand exactly what you mean. Nicely. I know, but just trust and believe. It's, it's how, how can I trust and believe if I don't even understand it? Well, you just got to use your primary muscle and not try to get into the secondary and, and third. So so let's it, let's talk about incline bench. What what muscles do you use in incline bench? Here, Dennis, just switch off shoulders. Yeah. Switch what, off what, tricep, what do you use when you do incline bench? You use your chest, you use your shoulder, you use your triceps. There's nothing you can do about it. It's going to be a high, way higher percentage here than it's going to be there and there. It's going to be like... Absolutely. I, yeah, and, and that's and that's why... Have the and that's the why I remember exactly what Milos always says, and I remember this. Exaggerate. Yeah. Use your chest when you push. That's what you do. That's what you have to yeah. do. But, yeah. You, yeah. but you can't but turn off got, shoulders. But but and as long as you keep the chest up high, as long as you do don't, don't do this, where yeah. now the shoulders will take over when you drop your chest. But if you yeah. keep your chest up and you exaggerate every time when you push, that's what you have to do. You still use your arms. You can't do it without arms. I'm saying you don't use your arms, but the percentage of pressure is going to be different. But Dorian, Dorian lifts a lot of weights, set, yeah. very heavy too, though. I mean, yeah. so, uh, I, I got to give it to him. He was I, strong and uh, he, he was precise. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was beautiful watching Dorian. He was super strong and the execution was just perfect. But on that note, you cannot, uh, example, we, we, we did. Dennis James doing five plates for eight reps on incline, and he could not do in front of Dorian, what would be a difference? What would the Dorian do you know, to lower his uh, strength and uh, execution of move that he does 
for 20 years, hundreds of times. This is, you know. Every week. Every why week. Why all yeah. of a sudden well, I couldn't do it? Trust me. Well, give me, tell me why. <laughs> you haven't told me yet. Not, not, including, not including, not including, not including, not including, now, including. now you want to take my frail, yeah, you want to take my frail ass to the gym. Now it's too late. Why? Not, not including. Just so you it, can understand. It, it, now I'm suffering with one plate, bro. I don't do no five Jim, plates. Okay. Jim, I do five plates too. I'm just telling you it's a difference. Well, you came there too but late. Jim one of the biggest chests out there though. But, uh, but Chris. I didn't. If you go huh? all out... Maybe that's why, Chris, your chest wasn't big enough. <laughs> I do five plates every workout. Yeah, maybe you used your shoulders. I did, mostly. Well, Chris, you had a good chest. You had a good huh? chest, too. You had a good uh, chest. I bigger. I wanted more. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but, but uh, Chris, define now to, to me. If it's all-out effort, all-out, and you're going to the failure. Hey, talking to you. Pay attention. Yeah. <laughs> nice talking to you, Chris. Huh? <laughs> he doesn't even know. Not disturbed. Not disturbed. <laughs> anyway, if you go all out, how can you possibly hold back on something else? If your mentality is, I'm all out pressing, all out pressing, but I'm going to shut off uh, shoulders and triceps, you know, then it's not all out. Anyway. You're talking to somebody I, else. I, I'm just telling you <laughs> the difference. <laughs> All right. I promise you. But he cannot explain why. It's hard to explain verbally. I could have a fake. That's what a lot of people try to learn on, on YouTube or Instagram, but you got to go through it. That's why when I went to go train with Dorian, when I actually made it out there. Well, you trained, a, you trained, you trained, you, well, he pushed you to the limit. He connected me more than anybody can ever imagine that that's a connection on that level. And I put all the pieces together and it, it was, it made a believer out of me because I was, I was 43 at the time. I wasn't even. Maybe young. that's why, you know, it has something and to do I with it too. Still, you already. And still, mm. and still the muscle fibers was like. Pow. But like, it could be the type of thing, Chris, that like you might not have caught on to that, but a lot of people like Dennis or me, I might. We already been doing that, maybe you know, connecting really well. Mm -hmm. I don't, you know, because I mean, I, I, I'll be I honest, watch people, you know, I can watch people and tell if they're connected or not. Yeah, <laughs> I'm just that. I, when I, tra I mean, I train, I train heavy, and I train, you know, precise also. And, and I, I can't imagine no one that I could could not train with. I'll be honest, you know, beast, beast mode. <laughs> So, for example, you did, a, you did the hack squats with Dorian, and then you puke and everything else on the hack squat, right? Right? Yeah. Okay. So, what was the no, difference with this hack squat? You gotta bring that up. Yeah. Because what was the difference with this hack squat? The level of exertion was way different. The level of what? Exertion. We exert yourself. When? What the fuck, dude? <laughs> <laughs> Somebody knock on that door like he owes some money to somebody. That wasn't yeah. that wasn't the housekeeping knock. Hey, nice little towel, <laughs> towel action that we got behind. Yeah. Hey. yeah. Anyway. Somebody left something. See, I left my drawers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Chris, anyway. Chris, you okay? I'm gonna try. Hey, <laughs> uh, anyway. uh, Dennis, uh, you, heard, you heard the debate between uh, uh, Dave and uh, Bob about uh, man's physique. Okay, the question, uh, does uh, man physique, guys, uh, w w their legs, are they judged or not? How they judge the legs if they have long shorts on? Well, they are apparently, you know, they're supposedly judging. Since, yeah, who, said, first, who said that they're judging? Time. Since when they yeah. judge? Since when Bob, they? Bob says that there was in the rules that they're judging the whole body, including legs. How can you judge the legs if I wear baggy shorts? <laughs> okay. I, I think I think they I think I think if you got a guy out there and you can see his legs are totally skinny through the shorts, compared to a guy that's filling out his shorts real good, 
they're going to like that look better. That's, that's what it is. I, not, know, but not, they, not, but I know, but they can't judge the legs. Yeah, yeah they're, not, they're judging the shape, though. They're judging the, hmm. uh, the sym symmetry. They're still going to judge the symmetry. If, if, if your shorts are fitting loose on you and you got a great upper body, but this guy over here, his, his shorts are fitting great around his legs, his glutes, and then and his upper body is perfect, too, it's it, it probably going to lean more that way. That's When I'm looking, that's what I see. I see yeah. a guy got – you can tell he got skinny legs. It, to me, it it cost him a little bit, you know. Apparently, Judge confirmed to Bob that they are looking at the whole body. This is the news to me because I've seen some flamingo women. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I mean, seriously. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. So, so he's arguing with who? Bob Chicarillo and uh, and uh, Dave oh, they're going back and forth. Oh, really? And uh, so I just seen yesterday that uh, Bob, you know. Took some uh, a screenshot and man's physique. They're judging the whole body. Like, oh, hold on a second. I said, well, why don't we just lose the shorts? Lose the shorts. Put that uh, classic, original classic uh, posing suit. Remember the trunks? You know, yeah, yeah. It sh still shows. Don't encourage the guys. You know, not to train legs. I mean, yeah. why would you? Just uh -huh. if you're changing the rules, just you know, make the make them higher. Show the legs, especially if you're judging it. I mean, I can stuff up the, the shorts, right? And go there if they're judging. Yeah, put some Spanx on. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> How did I know? Yeah. I, I thought I thought this whole time that they judged the upper body and the calves. Me too. So who won the debate? You know, I, I, I didn't. I, <laughs> who won? I, I'm just watching. I, I just made a comment to Bob over there, lose the shorts. And that's really what they're supposed to do, lose the shorts. Mm. Once and for all. Especially if you're judging the whole body, then judge it. You know? Shit. Yeah, they, they, but I don't think they judge the whole body. They, well, they judge, well, who, who's the judge that confirmed that they judge in the, the legs? They didn't want to mention the name, but it's like some major judge. So. so what if she don't want to mention the name, what does that tell you? It's not like you're giving out a secret. <laughs> but, but all these years, okay, Chris, did you know that they judge... Uh, uh, whole body in the man's physique? No. No, no, no but Milos, if he said a judge told him, why ah. is he not able to mention the name of the judge? It shouldn't be a secret. Listen, there is a few people that are authentic, open and honest and brave. Okay, this is very few people. I've been always that way, stick my neck, and then later on, like I wonder why they, they, they cut it out. Why you? But you wonder why your hair is in the guillotine. <laughs> but yeah, but, but the thing is, we should have a transparency. Yeah. It's, why would you be ashamed? Just like you said, if this is the rule, the judge should publicly say this is the rule. And if 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 he can't name, us if didn't he, know that. If he can name the name of a judge, then maybe there was nobody, or maybe it's a judge that hasn't judged in years. I yeah. don't know. Because if, if, let's say, for instance, if that would have been Steve yeah. Weinberger, why can't you say Steve Weinberger said yes? What's the right. secret about all this? I can't tell you. But I will tell him in person Look, how, how we know that this is the truth. Yeah, Don is the only one that actually saw from that perspective. If, if uh, legs are a little bit more uh, fuller on this guy, they're going to prefer their physique. And maybe. I didn't even... Consider this because honestly, I've seen some guys you see, in electric yeah. plant that they had no legs whatsoever. Yeah. But you see some, you see the ones with the legs. Oh yeah. You see them, they, they wear the tighter the shorts now. You yeah, know, yeah. the kind of the, the, the tight fit. They're not yeah. loose anymore. You see, you only see the ones with no legs wearing the loose shorts. Yeah. Well, but then again, a, then again, there's guys like what's this guy's name? Uh, I mean, uh, um, uh, uh, Brian Hendrick, uh, Brandon Hendrickson, uh, uh, he's got good legs. Yeah. They're not the yeah. biggest legs, but they got good legs. These guys train their legs. Yeah. yeah. And that, that's what I was saying, though. Like I said, um, yeah, you still may have a guy with slim legs. It depends on who, who he's going against. But if he's going against someone like a Brandon Hendricks or someone that has the full package and they're both good on the upper body, then they're going to start looking down on who's more – well, you know, everything is more complete mm. rather than the guy that looks like he has sticks under there. That's when it's going to cost him when it gets neck and neck, you know. And if he's the only one up there, he's, if he's the best one up there with a body, the rest of them don't have that great of shapes, then he's still going to win some shows too, mm. you know, because he has a great body. But if you're looking, when it gets neck and neck, and that's why Brandon does good, because he does have a complete 
physique. You can tell he has a great shape from top to bottom, you know. Yeah. And same thing with Je- Jeremy, you know, Jeremy, but you know, but whatever, you know, his last name, he had a nice shape from top to bottom, you yeah. know. Sadiq, Sadiq had a nice shape. You can see his quads through his pants, you know, type of thing. So I think it makes a difference, but it, it, it's not going to be the be all, you know. Mm. But when it's neck and neck, they're going to say, okay, well, this guy's built from head to toe, not skinny legs, you know, and calves and things like that, you know. Somebody, somebody showed me something about uh, <clears throat> Ian's chest. Is that an issue? It's visible. It is visible. Yeah. What do you think that is? Is it a tear? God knows. Uh, it's kind of yeah. like, you know who had the same issue? Marcus Rule. Marcus Rule, yeah. It, it and, went uh, from in and it went and it, and it opened up, you know, without, yeah, without, without, without being in pain. Is it scar tissue? Why? From where? Yeah, it's, uh, you know, unexplainable. King Kamali had the same, Chris, same thing. Say it. <laughs> Chris would be like, I don't know for what. <laughs> this guy. Do you think? Do you think it's scar tissue? Yeah. I mean, it's possible. Yeah. There's no way weird. that Marcus injected this uh, perfect chest. I don't. Come on. No, no. We we talk about Ian. Well, listen. It, I mean, it just looks unhealthy, right? So it looks I, like to me like this is like a it's like a I, a minor tear that's just keep stretching. I feel like you can't, you should not be trying to overflex that area. Like, uh, what's his name? Um, Lebrada has a, a chest issue. No, he but, had a pec tear, though. Yeah, I know. But what I'm saying is, the way he poses it is, is just beautiful. I watch it all the time. Like, he really don't use it that much to to make I know, but, but what, what, what but, I saw but is... It was like... It's different. It it's like, different if it's, if it's out here. But from Ian, it looks like it's in the inner peck. Like it's just, it's just, just create. There's a hole there now. You have to get creative with how he posed, you know. I, I just, I'm just bringing this up because I don't know where somebody showed me something where um, they accuse yeah. him, they accuse him of lying or something. No, it's oh, not about. about I'm not, I don't know exactly what it was. Uh, I can't remember. I don't want to quote it and then fuck it up. But suppose oh, I think it's, it's, but he, he had some type of work going on and he fixed it in like a day or something like that, you know. Uh, it's not fixed. It's you work. Well, it's you work, you know. Hmm. He showed it a different See, stuff. You did before the show, it wasn't really. No, like it's that. That, no, it was something else. It was something else, and I can't remember what it was. And, somebody, somebody said something that there's an injury, and I think who's the coach now from uh, from Ian? Uh, Matt Hansen. He yeah. supposedly said that there's an injury. When Ian, yeah. I don't know. I don't know exactly. Uh, uh, I thought you, you know, guys heard about it. I, somebody showed me something. There was some, mes- some message going around. Uh, I don't know exactly, so I don't want to start no fucking rumors. All yeah, I know yeah, is yeah. I saw pictures and I, and I saw it. It's, it looked like there's something is not right. Yeah, yeah. So hopefully it doesn't get worse. You know mm. how it is? But they, I'm, th- I'm saying this because Marcus Marcus started the same and then he got worse. Yeah, horrible for him. Yeah, I know. It's not going to keep getting Marcus probably had one of the best chests in history. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. His chest was fucking top to bottom. <laughs> yeah. It's like yeah. bursting out, going, getting yeah. in. Yeah. All he needed, yeah. if he, if he would have had that triceps to match that chest and shoulders. It's just a little bit bigger uh, quads. Hmm. Little yeah. Bigger, you know? Quads. He would, he would have been. But uh, Don, who is your all time favorite bodybuilder? Hmm, that's a lot. I mean, I don't know. I mean, one. One? Yeah, it's, it's really hard to name one. It's really hard. Dude. I mean, Dude. it's hard. I mean, I, I, I mean, I can just go. I mean, Lee Haney, you know, starting with Lee, you know, but for me, you know, you know, Flex, Sean, Chris, Milos. I mean, I like something about all of you. I mean, it's, it was just a great era of people, but definitely starting with Lee Haney for me. That was that was my inspiration in the beginning. Yeah, Dexter Lee Jackson, Haney. you know, Dexter just being as phenomenal. It's just, you know, I don't, I, I don't, I, can't, I really can't even name just one that I prefer. There was so many great bodies, you know, so many, you know, just I mean, Dennis huge, and I mean, you see Dennis, he look like a, a a house when you when you next to him. So there's just so many people out there that you could just say. Wow, you know, so I don't know. I can't. It's hard for me to name well, one. That, you know. Don't you look up to I, the whole top ten? Like the whole top again. ten. You can look up to the whole top ten. 
Oh, no, we lost him. He'll, he'll be back. He'll be back. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, yeah, you can look to the whole top 10 and be. That's why it's like, I don't understand why he didn't do the Olympia and just be a part of that top 10 or whatever. There, there are a few guys that missed the Olympia thinking they're going to do it so again. Did, did Don oh. never compete in the Olympia? Never, yeah. yeah oh. I remember because uh, he was the newcomer. I mean, 95 Nationals. He beat this lineup. It was like Tony Freeman was there too. He beat Tony as well and Edgar and everybody. And that was Edgar when we were all thinking that he's going to be at, the next. At his best. Yeah. And then uh, 96, uh, he placed third to, to uh, Flex and Ronnie. And then Haas because he didn't like to be ninth. I mean, I've never been a one digit. <laughs> you said I, I was. Tenth like three times and that's I wish, it. I wish I would have got ninth in my first Olympia. <laughs> that would have been yay. <laughs> so well, listen, if he's not coming back, then uh, we're good anyways. We're close. Good anyways. Yeah. Okay, so, so uh, hey, take some pictures, uh, Chris. Do some live Instagram. Yeah. Yeah. Get, right. get, listen, whoop their ass. Let make them work. Don't make it all fucking fake show. Let them really fucking push them. Yeah. You know? Is this legs, really? I wanna, like I said, I want to do legs, man. They're going to probably not want to do legs, not want to do this body. Oh, body. so you don't even know what's going to happen. I want to do legs. Did you? Uh, who's one? Uh, who's... Derek is going to want to do back. <laughs> no. No. Okay. Derek is going to want to do back. You, no, you, you, didn't, you do, didn't you do back with the last two? Yeah. yeah, you can't do it back now. It's got to be something different. I know. That's what I'm saying. You got to catch it. Everybody did back so far. Yeah. The, the, the physique guys. Uh, Main physique. Jer class. Jeremy and Banks. And the classic. Uh, oh, uh, uh, Chris Bumstead and Dino? Yeah. Huh. I'm going to do something different. Yeah, do something different. Put, put him under the fucking squat right. Let's Make go. him work. Make him work. All right, guys. Then we hey, let's wrap this up. You know we had All going right. on. Thanks to God. Thank you, guys. Listen, Chris, you you start at what time? Two o'clock. You started too. What you guys? You guys gonna be in there till like what four? Yeah. Yeah. So maybe if I because I gotta run back do something. Maybe I can come later. Maybe I, maybe I stop by just to say hi. Yeah. Sure. All right. All right, Milos. All right, All right guys. I'll talk to you yeah. in the next right. couple of days. Hopefully, you got some yeah. good news for me. Yeah, I already. That was a good news. I All think. right. Yeah, yeah. Sounds great. I'm definitely. Good. I'm definitely. I'm definitely planning. Okay. All right. All right, guys. Take care, man. God bless you both. Take All care. Right. Bye bye. Okay.